We're starting this project with a canvas that I have painted gold. This project actually was kind of inspired by this print. It turned out beautifully. And I'm going to try and reproduce it. And I actually I don't know if you can see the gold in there. There's kind of a gold shadow on it. I'm going to try and get that because I want to use this in the background of my canvas. We're going to start out using this Traditions Gold. It's a very opaque gold. So that's part of the reason why I like this. However, any gold will work just fine. I'm going to use this Melty Morocco stencil from PM Artist Studio. And I'm going to lay it down on top of my paint. I'm going to remove as much of this paint as I possibly can onto this piece of deli paper. Okay, I'm going to leave that extra, that excess on there because I kind of want that to be there. Taking a clean piece of deli paper and okay, let's pull this print. And I'm going to take this DecoArt Media Acrylic Titan Buff. Set it down again. Mm, that came off really, really well. And you pull this up. And I'm going to grab this one. And I'm going to try to position this so it is slightly offset. I think I got it. Okay, I'll let that sit for a minute. I'll be back to pull it. All right. Well, I pulled that print and it did not work. So I'm going to show you a trick. This is something I use eh, occasionally. Not very often, but occasionally. This is Liquitex Gloss Gel. And you don't need a ton. I don't know if you can see what's on the end of my palette knife there. And lay it down. This is Sprayer it out. Very, very, very thin, very light coat. And then bring this back to do, lay it down. Bear it over the top of it. And then this will have to sit. Okay, I'm going to pull this very gently. And it's, it's coming up. It's faint, but it's coming up. Okay, pulled up better. Still didn't pull up perfectly, but I think I can work with that. But can you see now how the gold is almost like a shadow underneath? Here's the canvas. The top is actually the positive image. And the sides are actually the negative. So it's all glued on here. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some sprays. I'm going to try this Moon Shadow Mist from Lindy's. I don't know if you can see it, but it's definitely kind of given it an aged, antiqued look. 
So I looked for recipes. It was kind of an old cookbook. Because I wanted to add a recipe to this. And I also want to add my little characters. And I'm going to add a chicken, a mother chicken, and some babies. And I decided to cut those out of some of my gel prints and I'm going to arrange them so that they're going to be flying on this canvas. And then I also cut out of some of my gel prints, I cut out the mother, her comb to the top, and I'm going to add her apron that I've cut out of a gel print. And these are kind of like playing with paper dolls. I don't know if you ever played with paper dolls when you were a kid. Um, I did, and I loved them. So let me show you some of the gel prints that I used. And this was the gel print that I used for the hen. Two of the gel prints that I cut the chicks out of. And then this one became the comb and the apron. We're going to do a little bit of shading on this before we start working on all the little characters. And the first thing I'm going to do, and you can see I started it here, I'm going to use a technique which is called um, floating in the decorative painting world. And then blend, 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 blend that paint so it almost begins to float across toward the middle of that brush. I'm going to go right next to my little chicken and around him. And then I don't really like how we have this hard edge, so I just take the end of my brush and just kind of blend it out. I'm going to come right around this because I tore this. It has kind of a rough edge and I think it's going to accept this paint very nicely. I pretty much did what I wanted it to do. So using the same technique I'm going to come right around the edges of my recipe and I'm going to add just a shadow. And I'm going to do that, kind of cast a little bit of a shadow around each one of these little characters. We're going to do a little dry brushing on um, the comb and our apron with light pink, which is electric pink. If you've never dry brushed before, put a little bit of paint on your brush. Take most of that paint off of the brush and then
and I'm going to add to that that pink just a little bit of white. So with my brush that's dirty, I'm going to dip into my titanium white and just blend it around on my palette and remove the bulk of that paint. This is Napa Red, which is my favorite red for shading. I'm going to use a small brush. This is a 3 8 inch angle brush. It's always good to reuse a paint color that you've used because you want those paint colors to be in more places than one on a piece. I'm going to shade Now that I've done that, I'm going to come back in with that phthalo blue. I'm going to just darken in up here a little bit. I want this a little darker. And over that red, it's just going to kind of turn purple, which I kind of like. I'm going to go around the, be the beak a little bit. Take a... I'm going to do the beak. And I'm going to do the wattle with that dark red that we use to shade with. I am shading these little chickies and I'm shading with this green from DecoArt which is Hauser Dark Green. Now this little guy, I actually shaded right here on the tops of the wings because he's turned, he's flipped upside down.
I am painting each one of these little chickies beaks with orange and I've already put one coat on them so and this is actually jack-o-lantern orange so we're going to use a darker orange and this is actually called tangelo and we're going to just put a quick shadow on these little beaks Just down one side. And the last thing we're going to do to the beaks is we're going to use a little bit of this neon scorching yellow. I'm going to use a black Posca marker and I'm just going to add in their little eyes. Try and get them the same size. I'm going to use a really, really small stylus and I'm just going to dot the eyes with a little bit of white paint. I want him looking this direction. So I'm going to start up here at the top. Dot, dot. I'm going to give him a little bit of a pink cheek. Then we use a little bit of electric pink and my dry brush. I'm going to use a piece of Punchinella and I'm just going to add in some darker areas. So, I do need to add some line work to this. So, basically, I want to outline the beaks. I want to give him just a little bit of a... some eyelashes. I want to come around like this. And then of course, I want to give him some legs. So, finish that up with each one of these, and then we'll be done with this.